Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at a 60 inch Edge 540 by Skywing. I just recently flew my first Skywing airplane. It was the Slick 73 inch model and it was beautiful. I had a great time with it and I wanted to follow that up with another Skywing entry just to kind of get a feel for the overall quality in the larger scale 73 inch and the smaller scale 60 inch. So let's take a look at what you get in the box. Here's a look at the motor box and you'll see this throughout. They use this kind of hybrid technology where they overlay fiberglass on top and bond that to the balsa underneath and that adds strength. So you see that throughout these types of builds. And on the firewall up front, they've already got the blind nuts installed and the screws that hold the radio mount for the motor onto the firewall. While we were filming the Slick Maiden, Freddie got a look at inside the canopy on the Slick and noticed how finished they actually made that canopy. And the edge is no different. They've enclosed the entire canopy. So there's a carbon fiber looking weave on the bottom there. And then they've got a cockpit with some instrumentation and the logo up front that says Edge 540 V2. So nice little detail on a canopy. You don't really see that too often in these models where they actually enclose the canopy on the inside. Nice touch. Now inside the cowl, you'll notice they already have the baffling installed too. It's not like these things are big tasks, but they take time. So if you're gonna do it right and you wanna install that air duct inside the cowl, it takes a little time to do that. So that's an acknowledgement I'd make for Skywing is they already have that baffling installed inside and it just saves me the time of doing it. Overall, I'd say the paint on the outside looks really good. I did notice a few blotches here and there. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up or not, but right there, there's a little bit of a, little bit of a dollop of paint. And then around the top, there's a couple little marks, but it's not a criminal act, you know, no big deal. These things happen. I, it's pretty rare that you find a canopy that sprayed perfectly. I'd say overall, this looks very good. Looks like very high quality. And of course, if you follow my videos, on my unbox videos for any length of time, you know how much I approve of having airflow intakes built into the cowls. That way I don't have to cut them. So they've done that for us as well. They've got nice airflow baffling up front for the motor and air intake for your ESC and electronics inside. So I'd say overall, very nicely done on the cowl. Underneath the cowl, you can see there's more of that fiberglass fusion construction technique. Another call out I'd make is that Skywing includes servo extensions. Notice we've got the aileron extensions connected to the airframe right there. So where the receiver goes, those extensions are in place already. And then on the back, they cut an egress hole for airflow. And they also pre-routed the rudder and elevator extensions, which again, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that hard to do. You just fish a wire back there, but it just saves time. So it's a nice touch. And I applaud them for including the servo extensions in their ARF kits. Here's a quick look at the shrink covering on the starboard side of the fuselage. I'd say it's very well done and I really like the design. I think it's very tasteful. The gray and white and yellow, it just goes really well together. It's a neat pattern and they didn't overdo it with the graphics. So I just think they did a really nice job. On the back where the stabilizer affixes to the fuselage, that's a keyed arrangement. Normally on these arrangements, there's very little modification to do to get that elevator in line with the fuselage and with the tips equal distance from the wing tips. So very nicely done. I like these keyed arrangements. That normally means the assembly goes pretty quick. Here's a look at the port side covering. And again, very nicely done. I don't have any complaints about the shrink covering on the fuselage at all. It looks like it's well done, no wrinkles. The sanding looks like it was well executed and taken care of, so no issues with the fuselage covering at all. Next up are the wings. And another shout out I'll make for Skywing is that they pre-hinge and seal the aileron seams. So notice there's heat shrink covering in the gap there and the ailerons are pre-hinged on the wing itself. Here's a look at the shrink covering on the port wing. And again, I don't see any defects in this covering at all. There's a, a wrinkle here or there, but it's nothing unusual for a pre-covered ARF kit. One complaint I had about my 73 inch slick is that they didn't include any type of washer for the side forge generator or thumb screws. So I printed my own out of 3D material. I just did a 3D print and printed a, a washer that fits underneath this thumb screw. And the idea there is just to keep the shrink covering from getting twisted or torqued by the thumb screw during assembly and disassembly. I'm not sure if this kit has those washers or not. I'm going to assume not because when I took the thumb screws out, there were no washers in place and the thumb screws were already in the wingtip. So I'm just gonna assume they weren't and I went ahead and printed my own. Here's a look at the pattern on the bottom of the port wing and I'll also point out that they removed the shrink covering over the servo opening. So that's another job done for you. It makes installing the servos just a little bit easier. And here's a look at the top of the starboard wing. Shrink covering on this wing is equally well done. No issues at all. 
And here's a look at the bottom of the starboard wing. You can see there's a couple little wrinkles that need to be ironed out, but that's really no big deal. Very easy to take care of. Another feature I really like about these Skywing planes is the quick release mechanism on the airplane. So right here, there's a little lever that you push up. And when you push this lever up, two things happen. There's a little opening that opens right there. And that opening is designed to capture the screw tip on the wing when you insert the wing into the fuselage. So after that screw is inserted into this hole in the back, then you push the guillotine latch down and that captures the screw so the wing doesn't come off. It just saves you time from using those thumb screws. The other nice thing about this is when the guillotine is up, there's a plastic tab that sticks up above the fuselage, which will prevent you from latching that canopy. The idea is that this has to be pushed down in order to put the canopy on and go fly. And the reason they do that is because if you forget to drop this guillotine, then it, your wing can come off during flight and we don't want that to happen. Next up is the elevator and stabilizer. Notice that the elevator is already hinged and sealed with the heat shrink covering. Very nicely done. Again, time saver. And I really like how it's a one piece elevator design. And here's a look at the bottom. Shrink covering on the bottom is straight white and that'll provide nice contrast in flight. So very well done. I like the coloring scheme on this plane quite a bit, actually. I think for orientation, it's gonna show up really well. Last up is the rudder, and check this out. They've already pre-glued the hinges on the rudder side of these hinges. So all you have to do is insert it into the vertical stabilizer and glue it up and you're done. Nice time-saving feature by Skywing. Next up is the hardware kit. I'm not gonna tear into this because you guys have all seen a hardware bag, but we've got wheels. It looks like baffling material, a tail wheel, a Velcro strap, some zip ties, and some various nuts and bolts to put everything together. Next up are the wheel pants, and I can tell you from my build on the slick, these are very sturdy devices. They have a lot of extra fiberglass right where it connects to the landing gear, so I don't see any issues with these wheel pants at all. They look very sturdy, and I'm sure they'll work just fine on the plane. Skywing does include a spinner. It's one of the Cyclone types, but unfortunately it's got one of those plastic backs and I cannot stand the plastic back spinners. I never have any luck with those. I'll try them out on this plane just to see what happens, but I'll be prepared to swap that out because I just cannot stand plastic back spinners. They always get wobbly on me. I can never get them to be perfectly balanced. Anyway, the spinner's included, so you got to give them credit for including one. Here's a look at the landing gear. And on the bottom of the plane, they already have the shrink covering removed to accommodate the landing gear, but nice carbon fiber piece, and it looks like it's well-made, very sturdy. I'll be using a 16.7 Falcon prop. This is my first time with a Falcon prop, and they had it in silver, which I think goes great with this color scheme, so I'm looking forward to using this prop on this plane. For the motor, I'll be using a Dual Sky 5050 515 KV. The reason I went with this one is because Sunny Sky doesn't always have stock, and I really wanted to try a different motor for a 60 class airplane, and these come highly recommended. So I was able to get this as part of a combo deal from Northwest RC. They took a little bit of money off when you bought the motor with the plane, so I want to give it a try. We'll see. They generally have a pretty good reputation out there. Regarding the ESC, I'll be using a Hobby Wing. This is an 80 amp. I have plenty of experience with these. They've never let me down. So this is a Platinum V4, and it also has a little cooling fan. I just love these things, so that's what's going in this plane. Last up are the servos. I'll be using the Emax 9252s. I've got experience using these in 60-inch planes, and I like them quite a bit. There are the specs in case you want to screenshot these. You can buy these from Emax USA, and they're reasonably priced at about 40 bucks per servo. And then finally, I have the servo extension arms. I got four of these from Northwest RC. These are 1.25 inch and they're 25 tooth splines. I know those work well with the Emacs servos. Well, that wraps up my first look at the Skywing Edge 540. It shouldn't take me too long to get this built and at the field. I'll try and get it done as soon as possible. So be on the lookout for a build recap and a maiden flight. If you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.